Hi. In this video, I'll be looking at Casella and Berger's statistical inference, chapter 1, problem 6. Here, first we'll read the question. Two pennies, two pennies, one with probability of head is equal to u and one with probability of heads is equal to w are to be tossed independently. This is important. They are, they, there's no connection between tossing coin 1 and tossing coin 2. Like there's no influence on one another. So first we'll consider coin 1. If you just consider coin 1, they, they are telling us probability of getting a head is equal to u. We know that for a coin there are only two possibilities. Either it can be head or toss. So probability of getting a tail is 1 minus u. For coin 2, the probability of getting a head is equal to w. So probability of getting tails or from coin 2 is 1 minus w. Okay. Next, let's say for most of the questions like this, it is easy if you can draw a free diagram. It's really, really easy. Right. Let's say you're going to toss coin 1 first. So from coin 1, there can be only two outcomes. Either you can get a head or a tail. Probability of getting head from coin 1 is u. The probability of getting tails is 1 minus u. Let's say you're going to toss coin 2 next. There can be two scenarios. You get head and tail. Probability of getting head from coin 2 is w and probability of getting tails is 1 minus w. Similarly, this is w and 1 minus w. Now, they have defined some probabilities. P0 means you're getting zero heads. P1 means only one head. P2 means two heads. Question is, can you choose U and W such that P0, P1, and P2 are equal to each other? So, first, let's find what are P0, P1, and P2. Right. P0 means zero heads occur. So, we have to look at the branch where there are only, there's only zero heads. So, this is no heads, no heads. So this is the only branch, this is the only, this yellow color branch is the only place where there are no heads. So what is that probability? Since the two coin tosses are independent, you can simply multiply these two probabilities. So this becomes 1 minus u into 1 minus w. Next. P1 means probability of getting one head. Right. Let's see how you can get one head. So you get one head and you don't need any more heads, so you're going to go in this branch. So that is u times u times 1 minus w. U times 1 minus w. Again, these two coin tosses are independent, so you can simply multiply the probabilities. Now, is there any other way that you can get only one head? There one more, there's one more branch. If you get tail from the first coin and heads from the second coin still you are left with only one head so it's it's an option so you would simply multiply the probabilities 1 minus u with w so this becomes w times 1 minus u right next finally p2 this is the probability of getting two heads that means from coin one you need heads okay you got heads here all right you get heads then again from coin 2 also you need heads right so it is going to be this branch so you can simply multiply the probabilities u and w to get that probability so it becomes u into w all right now i need to solve this p0 equal to P0 equal to P1 equal to P2. I, I need to solve this and see whether it is possible. First, I'll say P0 is equal to P2. Okay. So, this is 1 minus U times 1 minus W is equal to UW. This is 1 minus W negative U plus UW. This is equal to UW. This UW, UW get cancelled. So, this becomes 
W plus U is equal to 1. So this is your equation 1. Next. Next, I'll equalize P1 with P2. Okay, so this is U times 1 minus W plus W times 1 minus U is equal to UW. I'll remove the brackets. U minus UW plus W minus UW, which is equal to UW. <clears throat> now, I can take these two negative UWs to the other side. So this becomes U plus W is equal to 3 UW. But from equation 1, from equation 1, you know that U plus W is equal to 1. So I'll just substitute that. So this becomes 3 UW is equal to 1. I'll write here. So this is this gives you UW is equal to one third. Again from one, from one it gives you that W plus U is equal to one. So this gives you W is equal to one minus U. Right? So this is I'll substitute in two. So this becomes U times W is now one minus U is equal to one third. Right, so I'll simplify this. This is u minus u squared is equal to one third. So I'll bring all the all, everything to the other side. So this becomes positive u squared negative u plus one third. Okay, is equal to zero. If there are to find real roots, you have to find the discriminant b squared minus four. Is if you have real roots or if this is possible. This would be greater than zero, but we'll see whether this is actually greater than zero or not. B squared, B is equal to negative one. Negative one squared minus four into A means coefficient of U squared, which is one. C means the constant, which is one third. So this is one minus one minus four over three. One minus four over three, which is negative one over three, which is less than zero. So the roots are roots are imaginary. So it is not possible. <clears throat> so using UW as P0 equal to P1 equal to P2 is not possible. Possible. Why? Because <clears throat> solution for u cannot be imaginary one because it's a probability. It is the probability of obtaining words. So it cannot be imaginary. So it is not possible to choose u and w such that p0 is equal to p1 equal to p2. It is not possible. Right. Guys. <clears throat>